Hello, I'm going to show you how to do a BR hammer installation using the MBRT aluminum tools. Let's begin. First, we're going to measure the belt thickness. Here we've already pre-skived for a BR6 fastener. And we're going to take our BR6 rivet selection gauge and we're going to measure on the ends, middle, and other end of the belt. And here you can see that the belt thickness is referencing a B rivet and the max of an A rivet. Since I'm going to be doing a hammer installation, I'm fine using either a B or an A rivet. If we were using a power tool, I would recommend using an A rivet because we're going to get extra compression of the rubber ply belt. Next, we're going to determine how many fastener plates we need for the belt width. We're going to lay our strips across the belt. Here we're going to use one full strip and here we're going to use three additional plates and we'll break off those three additional plates. And we'll do that for the top and bottom side. And now we could load the fastener plates into the tool. To load the plates in the tool, we're going to remove the clamp bars. and the alignment bar. And we're going to center the plates into the tool. If we're working on a flat surface, we can just nest the fasteners in like so. But if we're working on an incline, there's a chance that those plates can come out of position. So then we'll take our plastic retainers and we can just lock in the plates so they don't fall out of position. For BR6, we want to locate these plates in between the spaces of the anvils. And that's enough to secure those plates. Now before loading the belt in the position, we're going to locate the top fasteners also. We're going to take our alignment bar and flip it upside down and secure it to the tool. And we're going to take our top fasteners, making sure it's flex go side up, just like the bottom is flex go side up. And we're going to align the top plates with the bottom plates. And we're going to secure them to the alignment bar using the plastic retainers. And we just want to use enough plastic retainers just to secure the plates in the position. And then we're going to take our top alignment bar and we're going to set it to the side and bring it back in later in the installation. Now we're ready to load the belt into the tool. We're going to take one of our clamp bars and place it in the middle of the MBRT tool. This is going to act as our first belt stop for our first belt end. We're going to bring our first belt end in. And we're just going to secure it with that first clamp bar, but not tightening it all the way. We're going to make sure that that belt end is fully against the clamp bar, which is our alignment bar for our first belt stop. And then we're going to center this side to side. There's two ways of doing that. If your belt width is smaller than the overall size of the tool, either way, we're going to take our tape measure and measure from one end of the belt to the end of the tool making sure we have the same measurement on both sides there. If needed, we could adjust the belt a little. Another quick reference way of doing this is looking at the ends of the anvils of the tool. And here I can count that I have 
two and a half open holes. And on the other side, I have two open holes. So if I move that belt a little more, now I have two and a quarter. And here I have two and a quarter. So I know my belt end is centered in the tool and I can go ahead and clamp it securely. Making sure when we tighten the clamp bar that we tighten it evenly on both ends. The MBRT clamp bar has a natural camber to it. So it's gonna tighten first in the middle and then as you tighten the ends, it'll tighten securely across the belt. We'll remove our second clamp bar and we'll bring our second belt end into place. Making sure that that belt end butts up completely against that first belt end and is centered side to side. And then once again, we'll secure that with the clamp bar, making sure the clamp bar is tightened evenly. And now we can go ahead and take our alignment bar and place that back on the tool, flipping it so it's right side up. We'll tighten the top knurled section first, which secures it to the tool. And then we'll bring our knurled nuts down And we're going to make sure that we tighten those evenly. And there's spring-loaded ball plungers in the alignment bar. And we're going to listen and feel for three to four clicks. We don't want to over-tighten the alignment bar because then it can naturally bow the opposite way. Now we're ready to install the rivets. We're going to take our guide blocks and load them on the MBRT tool. We always want to make sure that we install the, the end plates first. And then after the end plates, we're going to install the middle. On wider installations, after the middle, then we would start splitting the difference, making sure that we can control the belt ripple and belt growth of a rubber plied install. Before loading the rivets and after setting the guide blocks in, we're going to go ahead and spray some silicone. And this will guide on the installation of the rivets and the three and the five prong drivers. Silicone also helps if the guide blocks are tight going on to the MBRT tool. We can spray some silicone on the wings here and then if needed, use a hammer to make sure that the guide blocks are fully seated. Here we have our BR6 rapid loader rivets. We're going to load those into the guide block and we're going to break off the plastic to unload the rivets into the guide block. And then we're going to take our three prong driver and push the rivets all the way down against the belt. There's a flat on the three prong driver and making sure that that flat is facing the middle of the guide block. And then we'll turn it around once again so that flat is facing the middle. Here we're gonna take our four pound hammer and now we're going to hit that three prong driver to start installing the rivets. The key about all rivet installations is that first hit, making sure that we hit with all our power and that's going to seat that rivet through the top fastener, through the belt, and through the bottom fastener into the tool. We don't want to hit the rivets with light hits because um, that can cause a chance for those rivets to separate from the nail and maybe go off course. And you can hear after that third hit that those rivets have bottomed out on the tool. And so we're done with the initial set in that location. When installing BR fasteners, we want to make sure that we install the rivets on one end of the guide block. And then we want to go to the opposite corner 
and this will help lock in both ends of the belt. And now we can go ahead and fill in the rest of the, the rivets. If the, if the three-prong driver is hard to get out of the guide block after setting it, you can go ahead and hit that guide block and that will help loosen the three-prong driver. When doing a BR-10 install, it's the same setup within the guide block. We would go ahead and load the five rivets. We would install one end and then go to that opposite corner and then fill in all the rest. Now we can go ahead and load the rivets on that opposite guide block. We're going to push those rivets down. Opposite corner. And then we can fill in the rest. And then we'll go ahead and move one of the guide blocks into the middle and we'll load those four rivets. If needed, you could always add more silicone spray. Opposite corner. And now we can go ahead and remove the guide blocks. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the alignment bar. To do this, we're going to loosen the bottom knurled nut first, and then we'll loosen the top. At first, it may seem hard to get the alignment bar off, and that's because those plastic retainers, and just go ahead and pry that away. After the initial set of the rivets, we want to go and do what we call the final set. Here we're going to make sure that all the rivets are fully seated against the fastener and then we're going to go and hit the scalloped edge of each plate and this is going to provide adequate compression for the fasteners. When hitting the rivets and the plates with the hammer we want to make sure that the hammer is in the flat position when we're contacting the plates. And we want to do this on both ends. Making sure that there's no daylight left under the rivet heads. And then we'll go and hit the scalloped edges down. The next step is making sure we remove the bridges in the troughing section using our bridge removal tool. Here we're going to determine where the troughing is and here it's after the third plate. So we're going to want to make sure we remove one to two bridges of the plates in that troughing area. So we're going to locate that between the bridges 
I like to give it a little angle here. And you can feel in here when that bridge is broken. Here we already, this was the gap between two plates, so we don't need to remove those bridges because there's none there. And what that does is it allows for that splice to be able to flex in the troughing junction. Now we're ready to remove the splice from the MBRT tool. We're going to loosen and remove both clamp bars. And then we're going to lift the belt up out of the tool. Here, imagine that this is on a conveyor and that belt is endless. To remove the excess nails, we're just going to take our hammer and swipe across from underneath the belt. And that removes all the nails from the splice. And we want to make sure we remove all the nails from our MBRT tool. This way when it's in use for the next person, there won't be any errors left in there for them. And here is our final BR6 splice. You can see we have good compression around the plates, providing a low profile splice. Our two belt ends are together, providing a nice SIF free splice. And on the bottom side, we have good rivet curl, which provides good strength. We can ignore the plastic retainers on the top and bottom, as those are going to wear out after a few cycles on the conveyor. And that's how you do a BR installation using the MBRT aluminum tool and a hammer.